Hey guys, welcome to Access Church. My name is Ida and I'm so glad you're joining us online today. I wanna let you know what's happening today at church. But first, right now we are live in the chat and we wanna hang out with you. Do me a favor and let us know you're here. Feel free to comment along with worship and the message. We're experiencing this live together. In just a moment, we're going to worship with Pastor Andy and Pastor Jason is going to share the word with us. If you know someone who might need to experience church online today, please invite them right now. It's not too late to invite friends to church. You can hit the share button to let people know that you're here and that they can join you live online. Also, if you'd like a copy of today's notes, please click on the notes tab at access.tv slash live. You can follow along with the message and send the notes to yourself. We've also included convenient links to our kids services today, as well as a link to participate in online giving. Again, we are so glad you're here. And right now let's join Pastor Andy in worship. In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe. God, help my unbelief. I choose to trust you. No matter what I feel, let faith arise. And let faith arise. For my champion's not dead, he is alive. And he already knows my every need. Surely he will come and rescue me. Oh God of miracles, come. We need your supernatural love to break through and nothing's impossible you're the god of miracles oh yes you And see the kingdom come, I lift my eyes. Yes, I do, for the battle has been won. My God is faithful, and every single word he said is true. He said it, I believe it. Oh, God of miracles, come. We need your super. Oh 
You are our living hope, Jesus. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven. I spoke your name into the night. And then through the darkness, your loving kindness, it tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy, and what heart could fathom such boundless grace the god of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken i am forgiven the king of kings calls me his own Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Sing hallelujah. Oh, and hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope oh Jesus you're my living hope cause then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe and out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me let's sing that again then came the morning and then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body it began to breathe and out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me yes jesus yours is the
so much for worshiping with us. We believe that something special happens when we lift up the name of Jesus. During this season, our church is focused on connecting with each other. We want to use all of the digital tools available to connect with you and resource you to help you take your next steps in your relationship with Jesus. Do me a favor. If you're not following Access Church on social media, now is the perfect time to do that. Please like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and definitely subscribe on YouTube. Join us tomorrow. We'll be sharing devotionals from our staff to help you grow closer to Jesus. Plus, we'll be going live on those platforms to share messages and pray together. Right now, follow us on social media so we can connect together. If you normally give in person, we have convenient online options available for you today. You can always give on our website at access.tv give, or you can use text to give. To do that, you can text any amount to the number 84321, and it will walk you through all of the steps. Thank you so much for your generosity. Right now, Pastor Jason is joining us online from our new building. He's standing in the room where thousands of people are going to take their next steps in their relationship with Jesus. If that's not worth being excited about, I don't know what is. Let's join Pastor Jason for his message for us today in our series, Hope. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to week three of Access Church being streamed online. So excited you're joining us today. If we've never met in person, my name is Jason, and I'm honored you're here. We are in week two of a series online called Hope, and the series really is all about hope. And I'm going to get to it in just a moment. But before I do, I want to just say two things to you. Number one, thank you so much for being an irrationally generous church. You have no idea the stories of hope that we're able to bring to people through your generosity. And I'd love to tell you all the stories, but the truth is I just can't as not to embarrass people. But the truth is your generosity is making a huge difference in so many people's lives here and around the world. So thank you for continuing to give the way you are. It's making a huge difference. The second thing is this, I'm enjoying church online and we're making the best out of this unique challenge and this unique situation. But do me a favor this week, comment. If you're on Facebook or on access.tv slash live, there's a live chat happening. Some of our team is there and we wanna interact with you. So do us a favor, interact, comment, and let's celebrate what God is doing in and through us in this season. Now, everybody, let's get to work. Today, as we jump into this topic of hope, I wanna to wrestle with one question, and it's a big question for all of us. Here's the question. Where do you find hope when anxiety comes knocking? Where do you find hope when anxiety comes knocking? Now, here's the truth. If you haven't felt it yet, you are going to feel at some point in this season a sense of anxiety. The truth is that there's been all kinds of studies done about anxiety and even leading into this virus and this crisis and pandemic, this has been labeled the most anxious generation ever. And therefore we are labeled as the most medicated generation in the history of mankind. Now, the point of today is I want to talk to you about what you do, what do you do when anxiety comes knocking? Because the truth is it is going to come knocking for all of us at some point or another. A couple of years ago, I had this unique, fun opportunity to take my kids to the beach. It was summertime. I had a very busy week. And so I thought to myself, I just need to do something to kind of take a break from all the busyness and stress of life. And I decided to go to the beach on a Saturday with my kids. And so the night before, Friday night, I pulled up the weather app on my phone. And according to the weather app, there was a 0% chance of rain at the beach we were going to go to. I thought this was perfect. The next morning, I woke up and I thought to myself, I'll just check it one more time just to make sure. And when I logged on to the weather app, it said there was only a 1% chance of rain. And I thought I'll take my chances and still go. So I got my kids all dressed up, ready for the beach. And I hit the garage door. And as the garage door was opening, I could see that rain was pouring from the sky. It was crazy. I don't know who runs the weather app, but they should have been fired on that day. And it was pouring rain outside of my house. And I thought, well, it still says there's only a 1% chance of rain at the beach. So let's just go. And so we got in the car and we drove and the whole drive to the beach, we drove through torrential rain. It was crazy how much rain we drove through to get there. And we get there to the beach and it was still pouring rain, but I could see like off in the distance, it seemed as if there was a break in the clouds. So I started driving south a little bit just to see if I could find a spot. 
And it was weird. I mean, you understand this if you live in Florida. It can be raining on one side of the street and completely dry and sunny on the other side of the street. And so as I was driving, we hit the spot where the rain just stopped. And I was like, oh my goodness, there's some sunshine. And I pulled into a parking spot quick and I said, kids, we are at the beach. Get out of the car. I don't know how long we have of sunshine, but let's go enjoy this. We went out to the beach and we set up and my kids started playing in the water and in the sand. And it was the weirdest experience ever. It was as if on the right, on the left, and to the front of us, there were storms all around us. There was torrential rain. There was lightning around us. But where we sat, there was literally no rain. There was sunshine and it was beautiful. We, we had our own private beach for like an hour without any rain stopping us from having fun. And I'll never forget being there and just kind of having these observations of this moment. The first one is so important, it's this. It's that seagulls are big jerks. If you've been to the beach, you know that this is true. They're coming for your chips, they're coming for your food. They are jerks. But here's the real observation from the beach, it's this. That there can be sunshine in the middle of our storms. That there can be sunshine in the middle of all of the storms of life. And if you were with us last week, we talked about this idea that Jesus said, you will face challenges in this life. You will have problems in this life. But he said, take heart. I have overcome the world. We talked about that last week. Today, I want to talk to you about what do you do when the anxiety comes? What do you do in the middle of those storms? And is it possible that you and I can experience some sunshine, some hope, some peace in the middle of those storms in our life? One of the things I've learned about following Jesus is that there's going to be turbulent times in our life. And God has a way of leveraging those turbulent times to get our full attention, to get the maximum amount of glory for it. Some years ago, my dad and I, we were on a flight. It was, we were either going to or coming from New Zealand. We were on an Air New Zealand flight. It was this huge airplane and we were sitting in the very, very back of the plane. Now, if you're prone to motion sickness, you know that you should always avoid the back of the plane because it's the bumpiest part. We were at the very, very, very back of the plane. And I remember the pilot coming over the intercom and saying, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. We're going to hit some terrible, terrible turbulence. Now, it's not good when your pilot says terrible twice in the same sentence. Now, if you've been on a flight before, you've certainly experienced some turbulence. You feel it shake a little bit. You, you hold onto your drink so it doesn't slide off of your tray. But the truth is, most turbulence is no big deal. We hit turbulence on this Air New Zealand flight unlike anything I've ever experienced before. It, the bottom dropped. It felt like 10 or 15 feet out from underneath us. M my bottom came off the seat over and over and over again. I kept pulling the seatbelt tighter and tighter, making sure I wouldn't fall out. And it was really interesting how the mood in the plane changed in this moment. I, I remember feeling panicked. I remember feeling nervous in this moment. Can I tell you what I didn't think about? I was a high school student. I, I didn't think about the school that I still had to do. I wasn't worried about the assignments that were undone. I wasn't thinking, man, I've got to mow the yard when I get home. Because in that moment, none of those things mattered. I turned my attention upward to heaven for help. I remember looking over at my dad. And my parents were in the middle of remodeling a bathroom. And my dad was always busy with projects at the church that he was on staff at. And I looked over at him. And it was funny because he wasn't worried about the bathroom. He wasn't worried about the bills. He wasn't worried about the stuff that the church needed to have him do his attention also turned heavenward because he knew that he needed help. Some years ago, it was about 11 years ago, there was a story that made international news here in America. It was in the middle of January 2009 and a pilot had a problem with his plane and he had to land the plane the only place he could, which was the Hudson River. Do you remember this? The pilot's name was Sully. He was all of a sudden lauded as an international hero for the way that he saved the lives of all of the people on board by landing the plane on a river. Well, after this happened a year or two later, I remember watching one of those shows like Dateline or 2020, and they did an interview with some people who were on the flight, and I'll never forget an interview with one of the stewardesses who was there on this flight that landed on the river. They said to her, tell us what it felt like in the cabin of the plane when the pilot announced that he was gonna have to try to land the plane on the water. And she said this, she said, you won't believe this, she goes, it got really actually quiet and calm. Now, I would have thought the opposite. I would have thought people were screaming and, you know, frightened, screaming in terror. But the truth is, she said, everybody on the plane got quiet. And when you looked around, you could see people all whispering prayers for help. Well, why do you think that is? And these are people who are Christians and atheists and people everywhere in between. 
And all of them, it's like this moment of terror, this great turbulence in their life caused them to turn their attention upward toward heaven for help. It's as if God somehow uses the turbulence in our life, the storms in our life to get our attention. And even if we're saying things like, God, where are you in this moment? At least we're turning our voice and turning our attention to him. It's as if in those dark, difficult days, in those turbulent times in our life, we turn to God because we realize that he and he alone is the only one who can actually give us hope. So, so, so what does hope mean? We're in the series on hope. Hope is this unique word. Here, here's two definitions of hope. The first one is a feeling of expectation and desire for certain things to happen. This is what most of us think of when we think of hope. But there's the secondary definition that I think is, it's almost more important. It's this, hope is a feeling of trust. So as a follower of Jesus, maybe what we need to define hope as is simply this, hope is trust. Hope is trust that God is who he says he is. Hope is trust that God will do what he said he will do. And I think in this season of uncertainty, in this season of unique chaos in the world, how amazing would it be if all of our lives were characterized by this kind of hope, which is a firm, committed trust in God and in him alone. When I was a kid, I'll never forget learning a few Bible verses. One of the first verses I ever remember as a kid was a simple verse. It's, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. I'm so old that I learned it in the King James Version. Well, one of the verses that I remember learning as a kid, and this is one of the verses that Christians used everywhere. They put it on bumper stickers and on t-shirts. It's, it's this really famous verse, but I want to challenge us to see it through a different lens today as we discover where hope comes from in the middle of anxiety. It's the verse Romans 8, 28. Here is what it says. It says, and we know. This word know means we have full confidence in the fact that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Now, when you read this, let me ask you a question. I want you to be really honest. Do you actually believe this? Do you actually believe that God is always at work? Uh, let's break the verse down just a little bit, okay? It says, and we know, we have full confidence in the fact that in all things, well, I, I really believe that God is good and that he's working in good things, don't you? Like when I get the promotion, when I get the raise, when I get the, when I get the good grades, when I, when, I, when I get the wife or the pregnancy or the vacation, or when I get the things that I want in life, I know that God's working, but that's not what it says. It doesn't say, we know that in good things God is working. It says that we know that in all things. Now this word all in Greek is this interesting word that means all. It just literally means all in all things, in all the good things, in all the bad things, in all the wonderful seasons and in all the challenging seasons, in your mountaintop moments and in the valleys of darkness in your life, in all things, God works. Now, this is one of those situations in the, this is one of those times in our life where you and I need to rest in the fact that even when it feels like we don't see God's activity, God's silence doesn't mean his absence. That God's inactivity, what God's seemingly inactivity doesn't mean that he is not actively working. In fact, as a follower of Jesus, you and I are invited to trust, to find hope in the fact that in all things, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff, all the great moments and all the devastating moments in all of those things, God works, okay, ready for this, for the good. Let me ask you this, do you believe, do you have hope or trust in the fact that your God, who is your good heavenly father, is at work for your good? If, if you don't, today is a moment when I think that all of us can find a foundation for our life to build our hope upon, which is a trust that our good God is always at work in all things for our good. Now help us understand this. I wanna to talk to you about what we do in the middle of the situations in our life that feel hopeless, that feel like we can't see past this moment, that we can't see past today. I wanna give us a new way to understand how to respond when anxiety comes knocking. Now, if you're like me and you're a little skeptical, you got a more questions than sometimes you have answers, I wanna give you a new way to process and think through this. And maybe you're a little bit like me. Maybe you're gonna hear this verse that we're gonna read in just a moment and you're gonna think, yeah, but, but you don't know my situation. 
And yeah, but you don't know what I'm walking through. And you don't understand that I just got laid off. Or you don't understand that I'm facing a diagnosis. You, you don't understand that there's divorce pending. You don't understand my life. We're about to read a verse written by a guy named Paul. And Paul's life is crazy. When we first meet Paul, he, his actual name was Saul. And Saul was a terrorist. He, he murdered Christians. He murdered and imprisoned people for following Jesus. And he has this moment. He's literally on his way to a city called Damascus. And on the road, God arrests his attention with this blinding light and says to him, I'm going to change you. Literally from the inside out, everything about you is going to be made new. So much so that I'm going to re-identify you. I'm giving you a new name. No longer will you be called Saul. You will now be called Paul. And you will not terrorize Christians, but you will actually be used to influence the rest of the world through your leadership and through your writing. Paul goes on to write two thirds of the New Testament, which says to me that no matter how far away you might feel from God in this moment, you cannot outrun the love and the grace of God. So Paul, he, he has this amazing, incredible story. And if you find yourself tempted to be like, well, you don't know about me, you, you wouldn't want to share your story before Paul shared his story. He had walked through some stuff. And Paul writes this letter from prison, and it's known as the book of joy, this letter of Philippians. It's known as the book of joy. And with all of this in mind, Paul is writing, chained to a Roman guard, knowing that at any moment he could be led out and literally beheaded. And he writes this letter that gives us the prescription for what to do with their, our anxiety. Here's what he says, Philippians chapter four. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. This word rejoice is such an interesting word. It literally means to find joy and then to find it again, to rejoice and rejoice one more time. And as Americans, the truth is we don't rejoice a whole lot because all of our needs are met. We have shelter and food and, and clean water and we have electricity. and we, Our lives are good. We tend to lose the beauty of joy. And Paul says, I want to show you where to find it. It's, it's not in your circumstances and it's not in your stuff. Here's where you find joy. It's in the Lord. Your joy is directly connected to your relationship with the Lord. Now here's what I need you to understand about this phrase. We said earlier that hope equals trust, that hope is what found in trusting God. If this is true, and I believe that it is, our hope is going to be found here in the Lord. But as Americans, we're, we're so tempted to find our joy in so many other places. In fact, we wouldn't say rejoice in the Lord. We would say, here's the reasons I rejoice. I rejoice in my new job. You, you might rejoice in your new car or your promotion or the date that called you back or a stock market turnaround. You, you might rejoice in an engagement or a scholarship or a happy marriage or a pregnancy or a vacation. And these are all wonderful things. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be excited about them, but they are not your source of joy. One more time, Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. And I'll say it again, rejoice. Then he says this, verse five. He says, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. This word gentleness is, we could, we could translate it to character. And here's the funny thing about us. So often what happens when life gets hard and when life gets challenging is it has this way of eroding our character. But what I want you to understand is you cannot control your circumstances, but you can control your character. You cannot control what happens around you. You can't control the economy. You can't control what other people say or do, but you can control your character. And we need to be reminded in this season that we can continue to work on who we actually are, our character. He says, let your character, your gentleness be evident to all. And the reason is God is close. The Lord is near. Verse six, he says this, do not be anxious about anything. Wait, hold up. That's kind of frustrating, right? Do not be anxious about anything. It's, it almost feels like, it, like he doesn't understand what I'm going through. I, some years ago, I got this interesting postcard in the mail, and it was from a local church. The truth is, it was so long ago, I don't even remember the church. But it was an invitation to Easter services at their church, and it was this carton of Easter eggs, all different colors, and each one had a marker that drew like a face, and every face on the egg was a scared face. It was like, they were all scared. And the, the postcard said, does the idea of going to church scare you? Don't let it. I thought, man, what a silly example. Like, how do you tell people, don't be anxious? It's like trying to tell a dog, don't be a cat. Like, you can't tell people to do something different than what they feel in this moment. 
And here's what he says. He says, don't be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Well, how? How how do you make it sound so easy? And Paul's going to tell us how. He says, in every situation, remember that's the good and the bad, in all things God is working. So in every situation, by prayer and petition. One of the things you need to understand is prayer isn't our last resort. Prayer should be the first thing that we do. He says, by prayer and petition, which means turn to God and use your voice to speak to him with thanksgiving. And this is interesting. So often gratitude precedes a heart that's at peace. So often gratitude actually grounds our heart in something. But what are you thankful for? Can I give you a quick thought? I'm actually grateful in the season that I've been able to be a little bit more present, a little bit closer to my family and to my kids. Like this has been such a unique season, but it's also provided some reasons to be thankful. So when you're feeling anxious, the recipe is in every situation, pray, talk to God, start with a heart full of gratitude. And then there's this interesting word. He says, present your request to God. This word present is really the, the, the hinge point. This is the lynch point of the whole verse. He says, present your request to God. This word present is this unique word in Greek, which literally means to reveal. It means to be honest. It means that when you talk to God, you open your heart in a new kind of way. And I wanna show you what this means. It means that we present or we reveal our heart by praying at the level of our insecurity. I don't know if you've ever been this honest with God, but he invites you to be this honest with him, to pray at a deeper, more profound level, to pray at the level of your insecurity. So so here's what this means. So often we pray, God, I need a new job. God, I need a new relationship. And God, I need a raise. And we pray those things at a kind of a high level, but somehow underneath all of the things that we pray for is a different level of insecurity. And when we learn to pray at that level, it changes things. So, so God, I need a new job. Here's the insecurity, because if I don't, I can't provide for my family. God, God, I need a new relationship. Insecurity. Because, because my soul longs for connection and intimacy. Learn to pray in a new way and open your heart, reveal your heart to God. We're all accustomed to hiding our insecurities. And God says, open it. Tell me what you're insecure about. He says, present your request to God. And then I want you to see what the promise is when we pray at that level, verse seven, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the promise. And I love this verse because when we pray at that level, when we reveal our heart and open our heart to God, here's the promise that we have. It says that the peace of God, which you can't understand, The peace of God that's so much bigger than your limited scope of understanding will guard your heart. The mental picture here is a guard standing with a gun protecting you. Guards who have your best interest at heart standing watch over your heart. It will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. You want to have peace? You want to experience hope in this season? You need to understand something. It comes when we reveal our hearts to God. So let me give you something that I want you to take away. If you're a note taker, write this down, tweet this, share this, invite your friends to see this. Here's what it is. In times of uncertainty, pray until the peace comes. When you feel uncertain, when you feel anxiety knocking at the door of your heart, pray until the peace comes and begin to pray at a level of insecurity and see what God does. So often we think of prayer as like petitioning God to change things. Let me show you something unique. C.S. Lewis, one of my favorite authors, said it like this. He said, prayer isn't about changing God. It's about changing me. When I pray, it changes everything and it changes me. One last thought and then we're done today. Here's what it is. When life is uncertain, I want you to remember that God is not. When life is uncertain, when it feels like your world is shaking and nothing around you makes sense whatsoever, God is not. So what do we do? We find our hope in one place and in one place alone. Hope is trust and trust is in God. When life is uncertain, God is not. Let me pray for you. God, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you have a recipe for us when we feel anxiety knocking at the door of our heart. Help us to remember that you are good and you work all things, all the good 
and all the bad. You work all things together for our good. So God, we trust you and help us to understand that when we pray at a different level and we reveal our hearts, the promise that we have is that your peace will come flooding our hearts, peace that we can't even understand. And so we trust you for that and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, before I go and sign off, I'd like to just ask you one question. Do you know if you're right with God right now? We have so many people that have been tuning in and watching these messages. I would hate to leave without giving you an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. If you're here and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus or you've just walked away from a decision you made as a kid, let me give you this opportunity now. Here's all you have to do is pray this with me and mean it with your heart. Would you say, Jesus, today I invite you to take control of my life. You be in charge, you take over. From this day forward, I give you control of my life and I invite you to be the Lord of my life. Take over my life, I give my life to you in your name, Jesus, amen. Hey, if you just prayed that prayer with us, we wanna say thank you so much for praying with us. It's the most important decision you can ever make. God bless you, everybody. At Access Church, we help people take the next step in their relationship with Jesus. This week, we want to connect with you and provide you with resources to help you take your next step. Every Monday at 7 a.m., our team will be sharing daily devotionals with you to help you start your day closer to Jesus. You can find these on Facebook and Instagram. Each Wednesday at 7 p.m., Pastor Andy will be leading us in worship live on Facebook and Instagram. It's a time when we can focus on lifting up the name of Jesus from all around our city. Parents, as the Access Kids Pastor, it is my true joy to partner with you as you lead your children in their relationship with Jesus. Right now, your family can tune into a brand new message for kids online at accesskids.tv. There, we will have online messages and resources for parents to use throughout the week. Also, please follow Access Kids on Facebook and Instagram. We'll be going live throughout the week and posting kids devotionals and story times from me and the entire Access Kids team. Each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., Pastor Isaiah will share a message for your students to connect with them and help them grow in their relationship with Jesus. We'll also share fun activities where students can connect throughout the week. You can find all of this at Access Youth's Facebook page and Instagram. Make sure to follow these accounts so you can see the updates throughout the week. Lastly, we believe that God hears and answers us when we pray. If you would like our team to pray for you, please let us know. If you have a need or would like to meet a need, let us know via text message to 863-777-4101. Our team prays over every prayer request and we'd love to pray alongside you. If you're looking for more resources, check out our website at access.tv. There you can learn about the church, find your next steps, watch previous messages, and participate in online giving. Again, thank you for joining us at Access Church today. We love you, we're here for you, and we're so excited to connect with you online. God bless you.